Most of our knowledge about the universe comes from light. We can see the moon because it reflects sunlight into our eyes. We can see the stars twinkle because of light emissions. Galileo Galilei pioneered the use of the telescope to enhance these observations using visible light. Our modern day astronomy has stemmed from visible light astronomy and what can be seen with the naked eye. But as you may have guessed, Visible light is only a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, and considering that not all distant cosmic bodies shine so brightly in this specific band of the electromagnetic spectrum, our viewpoint of the universe is very limited solely based on visible light. However, as technology advanced, it became possible to observe the universe using other portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. For example, Using radio telescopes, we have found pulsars, quasars, and other extreme cosmic entities that push the boundaries of our current understanding of physics. Observations in the microwave field have brought forth the faint and subtle imprint of the Big Bang itself, which Stephen Hawking labeled as the greatest discovery of the century, if not of all time. Gamma rays, X-rays, UV rays, and IR rays have also heralded new observations that could not have been made otherwise. And this is why astronomers hold forth the same for gravitational waves. Gravitational wave astronomy opens a new door to the cosmos and an entirely different perception of the universe using an entirely different sense. Because we are no longer relying on light to understand the universe, but rather, gravitational waves allow us to hear the universe. Now, what exactly are gravitational waves? To explain, let's go back in time a little. This is Newton's law of gravitation. It essentially states that any two bodies with masses exert mutual pulls on each other. The gravitational pull depends on their masses and also the distance from each other. Now that's all cool and good, except for the fact that Newton's law is only a mathematical description of gravity. It only gives the strength of the pulls and pulls, but doesn't ever elaborate on how the pulls are being carried out. That's where Einstein comes into the picture. In 1915, he proposed the general theory of relativity, which stated that gravity isn't really a force at all. It isn't this magical pull. It's just a result of warps in space-time. So space is like a sheet made of fabric, according to general relativity. And in the presence of huge masses, this fabric distorts and any other body to come close to it remains in its strong gravitational pull. And essentially, that's general relativity. That gravity is nothing but warps and curves in space-time. It's not actually a force. Rather, the illusion of a force. In 1916, Einstein pushed further. If space has the ability to warp due to large masses, then if that large mass jostles around the fabric of space-time, then it can cause the fabric to oscillate and create waves, which he later on labeled as gravitational waves. But you have to keep in mind that gravitational waves and gravity in general are extremely weak. Everything with mass moving in space, even me, produce gravitational waves. Electrons oscillating to create radio waves also create gravitational waves, since it is matter after all. But it only emits a quadrillionth of a quintillionth of a quintillionth of a quintillionth of 200 watts of energy as gravitational energy. And that's why we can only detect gravitational waves coming from and caused by extreme and massive cosmic events. Like two massive black holes orbiting each other. At 11.53 a.m. on September 14, 2015, this is precisely what the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Observatory, namely LIGO, detected. 1.3 billion years away, in a far, far galaxy, two black holes locked in a spiral, one the mass of 29 suns and one 36, fixed in a spiral coalesced giving out more energy than all the stars in the visible universe combined in the form of gravitational waves. That song of gravitational waves have been ringing through space while we were still making wall paintings. Now gravitational waves propagate as a fluctuation of squeezed and stretched space. 
So yes, on the 14th of September 2015, 11.53am, since you are a part of space, you were fatter and thinner and shorter and fatter as a path through your body. But that fluctuation only causes changes by a factor of 10 to the power minus 21, which is actually less than the millionth the length of a proton. So don't worry about your waist size. So how exactly does LIGO detect such minute fluctuations? Well, LIGO exploits this property of extremely small deviation in space by using lasers and a simple technique called interferometry. There are three LIGO detection facilities, one in Louisiana, one in Washington State, and one in Italy called Virgo. In a nutshell, these detectors send down beams of lasers down two four-kilometer long evacuated tunnels. And then when the light recombines, it creates an iconic pattern called an interference pattern. Here's the experimental setup. So we have a laser, a beam splitter, two mirrors, and that's it. First, the laser is shot out of the laser, expectedly. Then the beam splitter splits the incoming beam. Then the two split beams are sent at right angles down four kilometer long vacuum tubes which are bounced off of mirrors back and forth 100 times before bringing them together again. Now if the length of the paths that the beams were sent down are just right, we can make the valleys of one line up with the peaks of the other. Due to destructive interference, the waves will cancel out completely and no signal or interference pattern will be seen. But if a gravitational wave were to pass by, it would shrink one of the paths and lengthen the other, meaning that the converging beam wouldn't cancel out completely, and we would end up getting little blips of signal. So that is what LIGO did when it ran from 2002 to 2010. However, during that 8 year period, only a couple of zero gravitational waves were found. So LIGO shut down, only to be reopened in 2015 as advanced LIGO which was 10 times more sensitive than the original LIGO. In terms of volume, it could see 10 cubed more volume than it could before. So how do gravitational waves allow us to hear the universe? So LIGO operates as an ear. First of all, visible light has a much, much smaller wavelength than sound, which could reach up to 50 feet long. Sounds are characterized by pitch, tone, rhythm, volume, so LIGO listens to the changes in amplitudes of the gravitational waves in a frequency that is in the audio band, thus allowing LIGO to convert the gravitational waves into sounds. What you just heard is literally the universe speaking to us. That is the sound of two black holes converging. Soon after, on December 16th, 2015, LIGO again received a signal from a binary black hole 1.4 billion years away. They were orbiting at half the speed of light to give off as much energy as our sun. Scientists compared the two signals from the previous detection and this detection and found that the second was subtler and longer. Now why am I fangirling? Because this is a pivotal moment in history, not just for science, but for humanity. Along with Einstein's three other predictions, this is the last direct confirmation of relativity. Not just because it confirms this theory, but because for millennia, for centuries, we've been studying the universe solely through light. Now gravitational waves, it's like hearing the world after being deaf for your entire life. It gives you a perspective from a different dimension, using sound, listening to the cosmic music of the universe we thought was silent. Now we can study supernovae, rotating neutron stars, cosmic strings, even inflation following Genesis itself, the very beginning. We can hear the universe. We can see the invisible using gravitational waves and that is so amazing.
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video on gravitational waves, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Spread the love of science, spread the passion, and I'm really glad to be doing this. So thank you. Thank you so much for all your support, guys. I really appreciate everything. It's Aisha Tron, and peace out. I shall see you on my next video.